States uh, dealing and taking care of all of the, the family matters that had to be dealt with with the passing of his mother. And at uh, this time, uh, Brother Bryce is going to come up and give us the morning announcements, and then uh, we'll take some time to welcome one another in the Lord. I'd like to welcome everybody here to Aviano Baptist, even though it's really cold out this morning. Uh, a couple of quick things for the men's ministry. If you were handed a church survey flyer, for the men's ministry and you brought it, please just drop it in the offering plate or if you see myself, yeah, hand it to me and, and I'll get it to where it is needed to go. Second, for the adult two Sunday school class upstairs, the couples Sunday school class, we have picked our next uh, study. It is going to be building your marriage to last. I'm going to be ordering supplies today. So if it's a study that you would be interested in, Please see me after church, and I will get you a book. All right. For the other, for the other announcements, uh, as Willie had stated, please continue to be in prayer for, um, for Pastor. He is flying back on Friday. Uh, pray for that he can finish everything up and that he can get back here safely. The Faith Bible FBI, Faith Bible Institute, is meeting here Thursday evenings at 530. Is there... Can they still sign up for that? Not for this semester. Not for this semester. You can't still sign up for this semester, but if you want to come and look at it and see the amazing part of what Faith Bible Institute is, you can sit in on a couple classes and then sign up for next semester. Awana's tonight. It is Noah night, so bring your favorite stuffed animal. That will be fun. And are there any other announcements that I may have missed? Welcome back. Okay. Welcome back. Jason, welcome back. Is there anyone else who has returned from deployment recently that we have not welcomed back yet? Is there anyone leaving on a deployment soon or this is your last Sunday that we have not addressed yet? Okay, if we miss people, we are truly sorry and we try to do the best we can on that. Hearing me on the microphone, I'm already loud enough, right? Um, amen. The men, yeah, see, amen. Uh, you know what the pastor used to say at my old church? I used to sit right there in the front, and he'd be like, "If it wasn't for Starry always singing, I might actually be on tune, or I might actually actually follow the song." You know, I'm really bad at singing, so don't put me on a mic when I sing. But uh, the church does need ushers. Uh, it's a, a a greeting, uh, a greeter, ushers. Uh, if the men of the church, you know, if your members. Uh, just be a part of it. It's uh, something that uh, if you join up with us in the mornings, you just take turns and greeting people, getting to know one another, especially if you're good with faces. You know, 
in all reality, we all like those people that remember us. If we go to a new place and people remember us, it makes a big difference. Unfortunately for me, I'm always like, I know your face, but I don't know your name. And I'm really bad. But uh, there are other people that they seem to remember everything you do. They can count the numbers of hairs on your head. I, I can't ever, I've never been able to do that, you know? I guess I've just been too, you know, too many weird chemicals in the military, right? But uh, we do need ushers. It's a real simple task. All you do is, you know, direct people around. If, if the men of the church are willing to get involved, it's nothing. We don't have massive meetings. We don't sit there, you know, for three hours having a discussion on how to pass a plate, right? You know, you pass it down. You don't look at people, you know? So if you guys are willing to get involved, please, please do. Because, you know, it gets you involved in the church. You get to be more familiar with people. You get to know people. You, you get to help them find a seat. It makes it more comfortable, too. Just like you when you guys first came to the church. It's always an uh, enjoyable experience when somebody comes to you warmly and caringly. Not just, you know, oh, hey, how you doing? I don't really have a, any desire to shake your hand, but I'm doing it just because it's, you know, military function. i got to do these things, right? Uh, we don't want that. But if you have a desire... Uh, if any desire whatsoever to meet new people and greet people, please, please be a part of the ushers. We definitely need it. Uh, and that, that's it for that announcement. So, brothers, want to get started? Let's, uh, let's open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so glad that we have the opportunity to come in your house this morning, Father, and to worship and praise you in song. That we have the opportunity to come and open our hearts and uh, be receptive for the word that's going to be brought today. Father, we just pray that everything we do here lifts you up in the highest of heavens this morning, Father. And we just pray that, uh, that the message that's brought will help us to be the, uh, the light here in Aviano. Father, we are thankful for this place that you've given us and this time we have to worship. And we say this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, just one more thing. If you guys <coughs> want, if the men want to, just see me after church today or any, any Sunday, please, because we definitely need it. Thank you. At this time, we're going to ask you to stand and welcome one another in the Lord this morning. And uh, then we'll get back to singing. We do have some guests with us this morning. If you're a guest and you didn't get a welcome packet, just let us know. And, we, uh, we'll, we'll help you out with that in just a little bit. as you return to your seats this morning. I will give you all my worship. I 
exalt. I will exalt. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. You are my God. You you're with me.
First, giving honor to God, who's the head of our life. To the pastor of this great church, Pastor Sam, in his absence. To his wife, Adele. To my wife, Yevonita. And to all who make up this congregation. And if I left you out, we give honor to you too. I'm not going to prolong the time. We know that it's Super Bowl Sunday. Some of us have festivities planned. We want to go and grill and eat cornbread and chicken wings and everything. So I'm going to ask if you would to please turn with me to Romans, the sixth chapter, the 18th through the 20th verse. Romans, seventh chapter, beginning at the 18th verse. And it reads, For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing, for two will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I do not that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is not more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for waking us up and starting us on our, on our way. We thank you for life, health, and strength, Heavenly Father. And we thank you for allowing us to come to your place of worship one more time. We ask that I decrease right now that you may increase in me, O Heavenly Father. That your word goes into ears and it be received and accepted, O Heavenly Father. That we may see what is wrong with us, Heavenly Father. You may correct it. We ask that you bring Pastor Sam back safely, O Heavenly Father. Watch over him as he travels back. These are all blessings we ask in the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say this. My topic is, my best isn't good enough. But this is not um, an excuse to justify doing wrong. This is not a reason to say that Jesus forgives me and everything's going to be all right. This is message is more so to encourage you to depend on the Lord to bring you out whatever situation you might face. We know it's another new year, 2015. And with the new year comes New Year's resolutions. We make promises to ourselves that we are going to get in shape. We are going to eat healthy. We are going to lose weight. We're going to be on time for church. We're going to make it to Sunday school and Bible study. And for the first week, we be on fire. We're in the gym working out. We're saying our prayers. We're, we're taking our vitamins. We're doing all this. But at the end of the week, we start coming up with excuses. Well, my baby was sick, so I didn't want to get him out in the cold. Uh, it was just one piece of cake. We make up all these different excuses, and next thing you know, we done given up on our resolution. We started out doing our best, but our best wasn't good enough. Now, as we look at this passage in Romans, Paul the Apostle is writing this message to the church in Rome because the church is receiving false hopes and they are being taught by false teachers. They are being misguided in the Bible, in the word of God. And Paul wants to encourage them. He wants to restore hope and he wants to get them on the right path. He want to get rid of all the, all the false doctrine and put in some solid doctrine. And he begins to talk about his own personal struggles with the flesh. Because the, the church in Rome was dealing with the idea that once they come to Christ, the sin will be no more. They'll, they'll be on a, a flowery bed of Eden. They, they won't have to worry about this and everything will be hunky-dory. So Paul begins to talk about how he's struggling with his flesh. He begins to talk about what's going on. Paul begins to talk about his own personal struggles. In 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, around the 8th verse, Paul talks about how he had a thorn in his flesh. 
and how he asked God to remove it three times. Now, we have to realize and understand something about Paul. Paul was the same one who was formerly known as Saul. He was persecuting the church. Paul was, he, he was converted on Damascus Road. Paul, he began to heal the sick, raise the dead, give sight to the blind. Paul had a personal, close, intimate relationship with God. But here, in Corinthians, he has one little thorn in his flesh. Now, he, he did all these miracles through Christ, but he couldn't even help himself. Three times he asked God to remove it. God wouldn't remove it. That was to let Paul know that it wasn't him doing these miracles. That was to let Paul know that you don't need to get on your high horse. Without me, you are nothing. In Galatians, the first chapter, the ninth verse, it says, As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than ye have received, let him be accursed. Paul is writing this letter to the church in Galatians. And he didn't exclude himself. He said, if anybody else, even me, come preach any other gospel, they are accursed. And the reason why he didn't exclude himself, because he had struggles too. Sometimes Paul get tired and weary. Sometimes Paul might not have wanted to read his Bible. Sometimes Paul might not have felt like going and doing missionary work. And what about the preachers? What about deacons? What about people in the church? We are all human. We all get tired. We all have things that we are struggling with. Some of us right now want to sit at the house all day. If I had a choice, I would have sit to the house all day. I would have fired up my grill. I would have put on some brats, got a couple of hot dog buns, turned the TV on, and laid in bed all day. We all have struggles, especially when we're doing our best. When we come to Christ, we shouldn't think that Satan is going to leave us alone now, unprotected by God. When you make the decision to come to Christ, that's when he's going to come with everything he got. As long as you are out there in the world doing everything you want to do, he already got you. Why am I going to bother somebody who is already doing what I want them to do? I'm going to leave them alone so they continue doing what I want them to do. But when they turn away from me, now i got to give them some attention. Now i got to send some things that way to deter them from the way that I want to, to deter them from the way that they're going. As, a, as a believers, we have to realize that all of our help comes from God. We have to realize that no matter how good things might seem that we're doing on our own, our best isn't good enough and it never will be good enough. If our best was good enough, Jesus wouldn't have to come down and die for us. In Acts, the 19th chapter, around the 15th verse, Paul is casting out evil spirits. And the local exorcist sees what Paul is doing. He begins to say, I can do that too. So he goes up to the evil spirits and saying, in the name of the God that Paul is speaking about, come out. The evil spirit, I can imagine the evil spirit propping his elbow and saying, now I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? That shows you what Paul, where Paul was at. That shows you how close he was with God. The evil spirits knew who Paul was. Yeah, you say it in the name of Jesus, but I don't know you. It's just like if I go up to the president, I know he's the president, but I don't know nothing about him. That's what the evil spirit was saying. Yeah, you say it in the name of Jesus, but I don't know nothing about you. And the evil spirit goes on and jumps on this person. If you go ahead and read it, it's a good chapter to read. But Paul, he was no scrub to the gospel. That's my whole point. He was no scrub. He wasn't an amateur. If, in fact, I would say that next to Jesus, Paul is probably as tough as they got when it came down to the Bible. 
So if Paul went through the struggles, that lets you know that you're going to go through struggles and it's not going to stop. As long as we're on earth, we're going to continue to go through struggles. So what do we do? How do we overcome these struggles? How do we overcome these weaknesses that we have? We have to realize that everybody has some weakness. Everybody has something personal that they're dealing with. I might be dealing with a lying tongue. You might be dealing with gluttonism. We all have at least one particular thing that is a constant battle, constant struggle. The first thing, by helping one another. Well, I'm weak at, that's where my wife is strong. Where my wife is weak at, that's where I am strong. And we help build one another up. We help lift one another up. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we have to build one another up. The outside world isn't going to do it. And as we build one another up, we go out into the outside world together as one unit and try to build them up too. The second thing, through prayer and studying, you got to have that relationship with God. You got to pray. You got to study God's words to show yourself approved. One thing we fail to realize is the enemy knows God's word too. If you read your Bible, you would know that Satan is a fallen angel. He was the anointed cherub that covered. So he knows God's words inside and out, forward and backwards. When you make one move, he didn't already made five. But by praying and studying and reading and developing our relationship with God, God will make a way out of knowing. So when the enemy comes against you, God has already equipped you with what you need to get out of that situation. Three, we have to let go and let God. A lot of times we think about what I can do. I can do this. I can do that. But what about God? When you get tired of, of, of giving up, when you get tired of quitting and you let go and let God, God will handle your situations. We have to realize that God never lost a patient. He never lost a courtroom battle. He even raised up the dead when he lost them. He raised them back up again. So there's nothing that God can't do. But you have to make it up in your minds and your hearts that you're going to let God do what he does. You have to be willing to say, okay, Lord, it's yours. Whatever you decide, that's what, that's what I'm going to deal with. That's the way I'm going to go. But we, we don't want to deny self. A lot of times when we make this commitment to God, God will take us some, to some areas that we don't want to deal with. God will have you to go some places that you don't want to go. God will have you to do some things that you don't want to do. But that's part of being humble. God can't do nothing with you if you're not humble. In, in Psalms 30, of, 30 of the 10th verse, it says, Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Lord, be thou my helper. Lord, I'm letting go and, and, and letting you handle it. In Proverbs 3rd chapter 6 verse, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. It didn't say he might. It didn't say he'll think about it. It said he will direct your path. But it also says in all ways, in all thy ways. When you didn't get your mail on time and you get mad about it, what would Jesus do? When that person cut you off in the middle of the road and you get road rage, what would Jesus do? When that person trying to get you fired from your job and you know you ain't did nothing wrong, what would Jesus do if it get tough now? When that person start talking to your kids and you're like, oh, I know you ain't talking about my kids, what would Jesus do? In all thy ways, acknowledge Jesus. Let him direct your path. You want to turn left, but Jesus want to turn right. You want to go straight, but Jesus want to go back. You got to let him direct your path. It's, it's, and it's not always easy. I'm not, trying to, I'm not preaching this message to you in the, in the th thoughts that it's going to be easy. Sometimes it gets hard. Preaching is easy. I can come here, preach. I can go there and preach and leave. Pastoring is hard. Ask Pastor Sam when he get back here. Ask his wife. She'll tell you. Pastoring is hard. You got all these people to worry about. You got to worry about this getting paid, that getting paid. People are calling you at your house, telling you about this person sick, that person sick. It's a hard job. But being humble, Pastor Sam acknowledged God's call, doing his will. God knew that 
our best wouldn't be good enough. That's why he sent his son to die, that we might live. Our best never will be good enough. That's why we have to stay focused, we have to pray, and we have to look toward the hill which come all of our help. It don't come from the job where you get your check. It don't come from your neighbor next door. It comes from Jesus. That's all we can do. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing in our lives. Heavenly Father, we pray this message you have, may have been received, Heavenly Father. We ask you right now, Heavenly Father, to be the heads of our life, Heavenly Father, and take over, Heavenly Father. So many times we have failed, but we know that you are a God that can do all things, Heavenly Father. And we ask that you lift us up, Heavenly Father, and guide our feet, direct our path, and change our hearts, Heavenly Father, to a heart that you might be able to use, Heavenly Father. Help us to dedicate our lives to you. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Brother Willie? But before I step down, is there anybody who's PCSing or deploying, going TDY, or even going out of town for a little while? If so, we want to wanna get with you and pray with you about that. So we'll come on. <coughs> there might be someone who, let me go ahead and pray, pray with you. Dear Heavenly Father, right now we ask that you protect our sisters and all others out there who are getting ready to PCS and deploy, going somewhere they might not have never been, going somewhere they might not have no family, Heavenly Father. We ask that you watch over them with a king now, Heavenly Father. Wrap your long arms around them, Heavenly Father. Protect them, Heavenly Father, and also comfort them, Heavenly Father. Let them know that everything is going to be all right, Heavenly Father, and there's nothing to fear, Heavenly Father. Help them to stay closer to you. Help them stay motivated and encouraged to stay in your word, O Heavenly Father, while they're gone, O Heavenly Father. And protect them, O Heavenly Father. These are all blessings and grace in the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. And now that the gospel has been preached, there might be someone who realizes their best isn't good enough. They may realize their shortcomings, and they want to come down and get prayed for. There might be someone who is going through some personal struggles. Someone who is going through some tribulations right now. We ask that you come forward, if you would, please, sir, please, ma'am. Will there be anyone? Or there might be someone who don't want to talk about what they're going through, and they just want to talk to God. You can come up to the altar and pray and have your conversation with Jesus. Might there be one?
have with us Joy Ashley and Maggie Brooks. They're here to join the church and they have a daughter and a son, uh, Maggie and Brooks. So we want to welcome men with a big old Aviano Baptist. Amen. 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 Okay. I get this. <laughs> They're just saying go ahead. All right. So uh, next Sunday we have services, obviously. Uh, Service starts at 11. We'd love to see you back next week. Um, we're going to ask the folks who came forward this morning to step out in the lobby so you can offer a word of encouragement to them this morning. So that's you guys' it's cue to go to the foyer. And uh, we're going to ask you guys to sing with us again the song that we introduced to you at the beginning of the service today. So this is a new one. And um, Can I sneak in something kind of selfish? <laughs> um, I know I could slap it on Facebook, but people would see it maybe. Maybe they wouldn't. Or it would just kind of pass through their minds. But saying it face-to-face -face kind of, I think, makes it click. Um, I'm going to the States for two weeks because my mom is having a double mastectomy. She's had a history of breast cancer, and they're basically doing a preemptive so she won't get it again. Um, so big prayers would be appreciated for that. She's having the actual procedure done on the 9th. So if anybody throughout your day, even before then, after then, if you think about my mom, please, please pray for her and the surgery and that it goes well. <laughs> Joanna, what's her name? Hannah. All right, let's uh, let's sing together as we go. May the few be many, Lord. May they see you as you are. May the narrow road be wide here, wide now. May your kingdom come. Five o'clock tonight. Awana's. And it's Noah night. <laughs>